Listen, there's no reason for this. This is not a mistake. He cheated. You know, really, till Monday morning, I have no idea what happened with the balls. The Patriots are cheaters. They've been cheaters. They're always going to be cheaters. The New England Patriots, one of the most dominant dynasties in NFL history. But were they built on greatness or greater cheating? This video dives deep into the Deflate Gate scandal, Spygate, and other accusations that have plagued the Patriots throughout the years. We'll examine the evidence, hear from experts, and answer the burning question Were the Patriots cheaters? Drama followed the New England Patriots for almost 20 years during their era of dominance. This is the story of how the Patriots established their dynasty and turned into the most despised team in sports. As an experienced head coach and a sixth round draft pick, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick might have led the greatest Cinderella story of all time, but instead they became the greatest NFL villain pair ever. All of it began in the second week of the 2001 campaign. Needs 10 yards. Oh, does he hit? The NFL underwent a permanent transformation when Tom Brady entered the league. Tom Brady led the Patriots to never again have a losing season. Brady spent his entire 20-year career with New England, winning six Super Bowls. But winning and controversy always goes hand in hand, and the drama llama quickly followed the Patriots in the 01-02 season. The Patriots finished 11-5 in Brady's rookie season, earning a first-round playoff bye and an AFC divisional round game against the Oakland Raiders. And when the fourth quarter snow started to fall, Brady stepped back to pass and Raiders defender Charles Woodson sacked him. The Raiders recovered the football, or so they believed. When Woodson jarred the ball loose as Brady seemed to tuck into his body, Oakland led by a field goal with less than two minutes remaining in the game and with a fumble, the game was all but over, until the officials re-examined the perpetrated Brady fumble and declared the play to be an incomplete throw. Quarterback's arm was going forward. It is an incomplete throw. Reversing the call, the Patriots retained possession. Tom Brady then went about doing Tom Brady stuff. He moved the Patriots into field goal range. And Adam Vinatieri, one of the field goal kicking goats, forced extra time. The Patriots prevailed in overtime, continued to roll through the postseason, and ultimately emerged victorious from the Super Bowl 36. Many, particularly Raider supporters, will revisit the play and vehemently disagree with the call. Still, there wasn't an X on the Patriots' back just yet. But their next issue turned everyone against them, since the Patriots were charged with unlawfully obtaining further intelligence regarding the St. Louis game plan in 2008, seven years after New England's historic Super Bowl victory over the Rams. The Patriots took the adage, desperate times, desperate measures, to a whole new level during practice week leading up to the Super Bowl. We know that tensions are high and everything is on the line. There was no hard proof that the Patriots had videotaped the Rams walk through practice before the Super Bowl in 2002, according to the Boston Herald, which also issued an apology to the Pats for the lack of proof. The Patriots were no longer associated with the controversy, but with a few titles, a lot of swagger, and another cheating charge snuck in between. The New England dynasty was in full force. Still, the Patriots were embroiled in fresh videotaping accusation in 2007. Throughout a regular season game, the Patriots were filming the New York Jets from an unapproved location. That was the notorious Spygate affair. And these accusations did turn out to be true. The guy's giving signals out in front of 80,000 people. So we filmed them taking signals out in front of 80,000 people, like there were a lot of other teams doing at that time, too. As a result, the NFL penalized Patriots head coach Bill Belichick half a million dollars and the New England organization another $250,000. And perhaps the league was at least wary of the Patriots' antics after they applied the pressure and revoked New England's first-round draft choice for 2008. So, in the next NFL draft, they were without a first-round selection. Years passed as people conjectured that the Patriots organization engaged in a regular high-tech espionage. Belichick actually later acknowledged that during the Spygate era, he had recorded coaching opponents' hand signals more than 40 times. Recording signals is not always unlawful. However, it certainly feeds the negative perception of cheating. There were plenty of reasons by now to despise the Patriots. The league also adopted what would be known as the Tom Brady rule, which forbids defensive players from hitting quarterbacks below the knee after Brady tore his ACL and missed the entire 2008 season. Brady had also come to represent quarterbacks being shielded by the officials. You can't now hit Tom Brady either, and the Pats get a slap on the wrist for cheating. 
For any fan outside of New England, that is at least how it felt. Then, in 2015, the biggest of all cheating accusations went public. A Colts beat reporter broke the story that the Patriots were under NFL investigation for using underinflated footballs in a 2015 postseason game that the Colts lost to New England. 11 of the 12 footballs the Patriots used were 2 PSI below the legal minimum of 12.5 PSI, according to a Chris Mortensen article published months later. And a few months later, seasoned NFL reporter Mortensen called that information untrue. Later, another NFL insider, Ian Rappaport, said that just one of the balls from that game was under legal limits. The speculation was out of hand, really. There were at least a 51% chance that the Patriots might have been involved in the deflation of game footballs, said Ted Wells, the NFL's hired investigator, who was on the case but could not locate any hard evidence after a protracted investigation. Reports counter-argument and chargers were flying back and forth between the NFL, the Patriots and the Colts with great frequency. The affair seemed to stretch on for a century. Tom Brady refused to participate with the inquiry, so the NFL punished him for four games of the next season. The US Supreme Court was also involved in this. Brady's appeal against his punishment, however, was granted by Commissioner Roger Goodell. Brady served out his suspension and didn't play until October of the following season. And nobody knows if his guilty party in this case at all. Maybe never will we know. Off the field, the Patriots had to deal with a very severe and stressful matters. Right in the thick of their two-decade reign came emerging star tight end Aaron Hernandez in 2013. Football-wise, Hernandez was a monster. He was a three-season Patriots player after playing collegiate football at Florida. Hernandez proved to be a matchup nightmare for opponents who were not Rob Gronkowski, but his ascent to fame came to an abrupt end. When Hernandez was taken into custody on murder charges for allegedly killing a guy by the name of Odin Lloyd, the sports world was rocked to its core. His Patriots release came right away. Up until his first-degree murder conviction and life in jail without the possibility of release in 2015, the tale dominated national media. Hernandez was then discovered dead in his detention cell in 2017. The cause of death was determined to be suicide. Winners do not exist in this case. Everybody lost, and life is far more important than athletics. It seems, nevertheless, that the Patriots could not evade national media attention. However, even though they ran the danger of being discovered cheating themselves, the Patriots players gave it everything they had to win at any costs. Plenty of performance-enhancing drug sanctions were strewn in across just about two decades of unmatched league dominance. From 2007 to 2018, New England has the sixth highest numbers of players suspended for using performance-enhancing drugs or PEDs. The most famous offenders were superstars Rodney Harrison in 2007 and Julian Edelman in 2018. Because of his performance-enhancing drug ban of four games, Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman has made it nearly impossible for the team to ever shake the cheating reputation that has followed them from season to season. There were plenty of other subdued allegations of cheating or just plain craziness that never really went away throughout the Patriots' heyday. While these particular charges were not proven, numerous former New England employees spread stories that some regular Joe Patriot employees would slip into the hotels and locker rooms of other teams to take their scouting reports and scripted play sheets for the next game. It's even been said that in an effort to fool Patriots personnel, rival coaches would sometimes leave fictitious play papers out in plain sight. But the horse made this following accusation directly. Supposedly, the Patriots reported fictitious injuries to the league in 2013. Former Patriots cornerback Akib Talib claimed the team has a unique reporting style. All the same, Talib missed three games in 2013 overall, and in 2015, the Patriots reported a hip issue. Head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin, was not reluctant to express his dissatisfaction with the Patriot organization after his headset apparently malfunctioned during a game against them on opening night at Gillette Stadium. Even though they were at the other end of the controversy, New England was unable to avoid it. The Jets were penalized $100,000 in 2015 for tampering when free agent standout cornerback Darrell Revis moved from New England to New York. 
The ultimate patch controversy, though, surfaced in 2019, Brady's last year in New England. NFL media personality Jay Glazer released a video during practice week before a game against the Cincinnati Bengals that seemed to show a New England film team filming the Bengals sideline from the press box. Security reportedly grabbed the movie and handed it to league executives. The Patriots said the footage was for a Patriots.com produced documentary. Belichick said that the Patriots.com operation was a totally different company from the New England organization when questioned about Spygate 2.0. The Patriots had to forfeit their impending third round draft pick in addition to a meager $1 million fine. Tom Brady went after that to play for Tampa Bay for three more seasons, winning one more Super Bowl before retiring in 2022. While Bill Belichick is still in charge of New England, he has had two losing seasons in his three years without Brady. Along with many other honors, the New England dynasty won six Super Bowls. Unquestionably, the best dynasty in NFL history is this one. But they were the most despised team in sports because of the innumerable scandals they were embroiled with. You are free to refer to the Patriots as losers or whatever else along the road. All right, we've laid out the facts surrounding the Patriots' alleged cheating. But what do you think? Were they cheaters or simply a brilliant team that pushed the boundaries? Let us know in the comments below. Did we miss any key points? Did we convince you one way or another? This is a complex issue with no easy answers. But one thing's for sure. The Patriots' legacy will forever be debated.